Hi everyone. Some people say that it is a thin line between sane and insane. But what I do know that there is a line, a distinct line between good and evil, between light and darkness, between God and Satan. again here at rescue the Persian our sermon topic is entitled evil repeated let's pray dear merciful father I thank you Lord for the opportunity to share your word unto your people again I pray father that you bring conviction to my heart and also all those who will be hearing forgive me O Lord Jesus of all my sins Hide me behind the shadow of your cross and help me, Father, that you may use me for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So again today, we are looking at evil repeated. Our scripture is from the book 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 26 to 30. And the word of the Lord says as follow. And as the king of Israel were passing by upon the wall, they cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she said, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hid and she had hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes, and he passed by upon the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Now this is a very interesting passage of scripture that it will be very wise for us to take into consideration today. As I have said before, for the third time, our topic is entitled, Evil Repeated. So there was a woman in Samaria, and at that time, there was a farming, and the word farming means an extreme scarcity of food. And while there was a farming, Brethren, two mothers had an agreement. And what was that agreement? That agreement was 
Today we will eat your son and tomorrow we will eat my son. That was the agreement. But when they boiled and eat the first mother's son, on the next day, that mother hid her son. And the woman who had the first son which was eaten came to the king because she was so angry that she did not get to eat the other woman's son. So they, she came to the king with her petition. And she let it be known unto the king the situation. But when the king heard it, he rent his clothes. Because he realized that the evilness of that time were elevated out of control. One thing we must know, brethren, that the story that we have just heard is the result of disobedience to God. It says when we go back to the book of Leviticus chapter 26, we will read concerning the blessing of obedience and the result of disobedience. Let us take our Bibles at this time and look at Leviticus chapter 26. If God's people will only obey and forsake idolatry and idol worship and their evilness, this famine would have never come upon God's people. But because they cleave unto their own understanding, this was the result of this obedience now let us read leviticus 26 and verse 29 and it says and ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat so if we read the whole chapter we realize that God tell them to do a specific thing. And if they, they were obedient to God, they would have received a certain blessing. But if they, were, if, if they are disobedient, that would have been the result of their disobedience. So it was prophesied that... If the children of Israel are disobedient to God, they will eat the flesh of their sons and they will eat the flesh of their daughters. So God is in no wise condoning cannibalism. But he is just telling them that if they separate themselves from him, that will be the result. Now, brethren, we may look at these two women as very evil. We will look at these two women as committing the unpardonable sin in our own mind. But we have to search the scripture to make sure and to find out that we are not doing the same thing that these two women did. So it is very imperative to know where we stand with God and our lifestyle, if it is acceptable to God or if it's not. Note that if it is acceptable to God, we will receive the blessings. But if it is not acceptable to God, we will reap the reward of our disobedience. Let us go through Romans chapter 1 verses 18 to 32 to find out if we are also being disobedient to God in this time that we are living in. And it, the word of the Lord says as follows from verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So the wrath of God is revealed unto all those who are ungodly and unrighteous. 
because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God had shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. That is a level of, of mindset that we have today. That instead of worship the omnipotent, omniscient God, we rather worship God's common G of clay and wood and of stone that hear not, that cannot see and cannot hear or pray to answer them. So it goes on to say, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies be between themselves. But it did not stop there. It says, who changed the truth of God into a lie, which is tampering with God's word. Where God said to do something, we are saying, no, it's not like that. It is like that. When, when God said in the beginning in Genesis that he himself created the heaven and the earth, we say, no, it's not like that. It happened as a big bang theory. So it goes to say, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. It goes on to say, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause. God gave them up unto vile affection, for even their woman did change a natural use into that which is against nature, lesbianism. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of woman or woman, burn in their own lust one towards another. Homosexuality, men with men, working that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. So when we be saying in our mind, what these women did was cruel and unacceptable to God. But right in our lives, there are little speck in our character that we need to chisel out. Because if we do, if we overlook it, we could be lost, brethren. It goes on to say, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do it. So let us try to break down some of these things that we have just went through. Let us look at some of the things we may be doing that is just as equal than cannibalism. So we are looking at the word unrighteous. Now the word unrighteous is not upright or wicked. 
Are we possessing a wicked spirit? The other one is fornication. Having sexual intercourse with someone you are not married to. It says wickedness. When I researched the word, it, done, it did not just only say back unrighteous, but it says evil. Doing things that God does not approve of. It goes on to say covetous. Someone who, who is greedy, wrongly desiring of wealth, only want wealth to, to not, not to bring honor to God, but to bring honor to themselves. Covetous. Then it says maliciousness. The word malicious is intended to do harm. Are you sitting down and thinking to do someone something that is not, will, will not do them good? but actually harm them. It says, full of envy. And when I look at that, I say, wow, it did not just say envy, but it says, full of envy. Now, envy is resent, resently longing, aroused by someone else's property or possession. You actually hate that person because they have something that you so dearly want. Brethren, it says murder. And we know murdering is killing someone. Not only thinking about it, but committing that act. Murder. It says debate. The word debate is arguing about a subject. Are we finding ourselves doing these things that God does not approve of? It said malignity whisperers. Now, in order to understand this word, we have to understand this, the, word, the word separately. It said malignity meaning cause harm and whisperers. It does not only mean in silent, but skillful. Are you thinking about a skillful way to cause someone harm. It also goes on to say. Backbiters. A person who say bad things about another. Haters of God. Do you have a cause to hate God? It says proud. Feeling deep pleasure of your own achievement. As if God did not give you the strength to achieve what you have. Boasters. Someone who always bragging about what they have. Inventors of evil things. This is so wide. Because we know that there is numerous amount of things that people invent. That is not even to give God on and glory. But it's to harm someone. These are things that God said he would give us up for. So not only the result of disobedience were on, these, on, on Israel at that time, or on these people who ate a child, but also it will be for you and I. Because the word of God is here as an example for us to really look at and go through. So we will know wrong from right. It goes on to say covenant breakers. Or before we get there, disobedient to parents. Are you being disobedient to your parents? It says without understanding. You just seem not to understand anything. You choose not to understand anything. Without natural affection. And we learn about that higher up. Homosexuality. Lesbianism. Bestiology. It says implacable. Unable to be stopped. Heartless. Gruesome. Unmerciful. Cruel or harsh. Brethren, these are the evil that is repeating today. And we need no other thing to do right now but to repent. 
We need to repent. Hear what Septa Christ paragraph, chapter 3, paragraph 1 has to say. How shall a man be just before God? How shall the sinner be made righteous? It is only through Christ that we can be brought into harmony with God, with holiness. But how are we to come to Christ? Many are asking the same question as did the multitude in the day of Pentecost. When convicted of sin, they cried, what shall we do to be saved? What shall we do? The first word of Peter's answer was repent. And you can read that in Acts chapter 2 verses 37 and 38. At another time shortly after, he said, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Brethren, there's only one thing left for us to do. The wickedness was in that time and the wickedness and the evilness is in this time. And there's only one thing that we can do and that is repent. Ask the Lord to, for ask the Lord to forgive us. And to turn from our wicked ways. You see in the, in the book Patriarchs and Prophets. A quotation says. If any man choose any other path than that of strict obedience. They will find that the end thereof are the ways of death. There is only one way brethren that you and I can be saved. Is strict obedience to God's word and God's word only. So there, these people decided to eat their children. Because they were hungry. So you see, when we are hungry and even in this time, sometimes if we are not connected to God, we will think about impossible things to do. We will think about the most strangest things to do once we are not connected to God. But brethren, there is also a serious farming that is coming. And we can find out what that farming is really about. And we can find that in the book Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. So we look at our natural ability to eat. And when that is restrained, we are hungry and we do weird things. And it's a more important farming that is coming. And let us find out what that farming is. It says, Behold, the days come, saying to the Lord God, that I will send a farming in the land, not a farming of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. So a famine is coming, not for food, physically, but a famine is coming for the word of the Lord. So while the word of the Lord is still here, while it is still available to you, Seek it, brethren. Hear it. And most importantly, live it. Because a time coming when we will be asking for this. But it might not have anyone to tell you. But if we top up on it now, brethren. If we search God's God word now. And be fortified with the word of the Lord. And build a relationship with God. When that famine should come. We will have extra oil in our lamps. So brethren. I hope that this little sermon brings an encouragement to you. These people ate that child. And we look at them as very bad. And people that need to be judged. But let us look at our character. And see that if there is anything that need getting rid of. And let us get rid of it today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father. 
Again, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord. For even reading this, it shows me that there is spot in my character that you, Lord Jesus, want me to get rid of. Father, please help us to really get rid of it. And help us, Lord, to continue to study your word. And strive to be more like you and get rid of sin in our lives. This we do ask. Be with everyone who is watching and I pray that they will give their hearts unto you and study your word before it's eternally too late. In Jesus' name. My encouragement to all of you, continue to strive for the mastery, which is none other than Jesus Christ. Maranatha, friends.